Blacks in Technology. Black, 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 blacks in technology. Blacks in technology. Black, blacks in technology. Blacks in technology. Black, blacks in technology. All right. Welcome, everybody, uh, to the Blacks in Technology audio podcast. This is episode number three. Oh, number 30. Uh, this is uh, Greg Greenlee owner and founder of the Blacks and Technology website. You can check us out at www.blacksandtechnology.net. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at Black and Technology, and that is B-L-K-T-E-C-H-N-O-L-O-G-Y. Uh, you can also check us up uh, on Facebook, Blacks and Technology, as well as we have a LinkedIn group under the same moniker, Blacks and Technology. It is May 27th, Sunday, late evening, 11.25 Eastern Standard Time, Uh, and tonight I actually have uh, a guest on the show tonight. He comes from from way of, he's on the West Coast, Seattle, Washington, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, by way of Dallas, Texas, by way of Nigeria, Uh, this gentleman, very interesting uh, background in technology, uh, and we're going to get into his uh, story and his background as well as his uh, uh, his app that is looking to pretty much change the world, and it's a very interesting app. Uh, we're going to get into that as well, so I want to introduce uh, Chooks Onawami. Is that correct, the last name? Chooks Onawami. Okay, Onawami. Okay. Uh, thanks yeah. for... Uh, <laughs> Thanks for uh, joining us tonight on the Box and Technology Podcast. Definitely appreciate you being on. Yeah, not a problem. Um, just to give a little background on how we met, um, we I actually met uh, troops that are down at the South by Southwest in Austin um, back in, what was that, March? I think it was back in yeah. March we met. Yeah. Uh, he yeah, actually... Okay. Um, he actually uh, provided me with a T-shirt. Thanks for that. I do wear that T-shirt quite often. Uh, awesome. <laughs> I actually, I actually had a uh, couple of people inquire about uh, getting those T-shirts. I guess they thought that I I sold the T-shirts myself, and I had to let them know <laughs> that I got them as a uh, as a gift. Uh, there's a couple of guys on Google Plus that I, t- I actually took a pic of me wearing the T-shirt and I posted it on. Um, uh, Google Plus, and there was a couple of inquiries about the T-shirt. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, I always try to represent, man. Anybody, you know, anybody who has a a, a good cause, uh, you know, that's into technology, uh, that's uh, you know working towards um, expanding that visibility, especially amongst black uh, technologists. I definitely like to uh, always represent them. So, anytime hey, I, can I really do, do I appreciate, it, Greg. <laughs> uh, no problem, no problem. So, Chooks. Um, you come from. You were born in Nigeria. Uh, let's, yes, get, uh, uh, let's get some background uh, into your journey into IT. You had a very interesting background. You sent me a, a bio, and I was reading, and I was kind of like blown away. I was like, this guy is practically, or he is a genius. So I, I, I definitely, I definitely want uh, you to um, give the uh, the listeners out there uh, some uh, some uh, a vision into your into your background. Oh yeah, sure. Um, that's uh, kind of like the first time I'm being described with a G word, but uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll defer that to <laughs> to, um, to the smarter people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, my my journey has been more more so, you know, one of uh, determination. Um, I mean, I uh, like you, you said correctly. I was I was born in Nigeria and. Um, I guess for me, from a from an early age, I was I was really um, around, you know, um, a lot of technical people. My my, my dad is an engineer, and um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I grew grew up in this place where, um, you know, they have a lot of a lot of uh, engineers. You know, my, my dad was was uh, one of the engineers who, who worked in this you know um, steel steel company, which was one of Africa's premier steel company back in the days. Um, and this 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 steel company was built by a lot of uh, um, you know foreign engineers. So I, I grew up in that mix of 
of um, you know, European, American, um, African engineers. And, you know, at a very early age, I, I used to always wonder, you know, why these guys were so smart. I mean, you know, I remember being six and asking my dad, you know, like, how come these guys are so smart? I mean, I just saw a lot of guys, you know, building stuff, you know, and, and you know, it really inspired me, you know, especially seeing, you know, folks like my dad just, um, you know, fixing a lot of things, right? So I yeah, I just thought from that age, you know, I, I just want to do stuff, right? Um, uh-huh. You know, but uh, I remember when when I uh, uh, when I got into um, elementary school, back, back then, um, you know, my – my mom had told me, actually, she gave me a challenge, right? You know, she, she told me, I went to this really prestigious um, school right there, and, and um, she, she had told me, you know, if I if I came top 20 out of a class of 144 people, um, you know, she's got some, something really special for me, right? And I ended up that first semester coming up fifth. And I'm like, wow, I mean, you know, if I could do, if I could place fifth, right? I mean, yeah. there's really no no reason why I can't place first, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, um, I, you know, you should realize in the in the cultural um, aspect of Nigeria. I mean, uh, academic performance was was worth a lot more, and, and you know, than anything else, you know. Um, so, um, in in the in the society over there, I mean. If you did well in school, that's that's it. You know, everyone just really wanted to do very well in school, right? My thing just yeah. became, you know, I want to be first. <laughs> you know, and and I just really got into that mode where, you know, I just turned myself into a geek and a nerd, just studying and doing everything I could. You know, until when I finished up high school, I was literally, you know, um, the top student. You know, and um, after that, I I really got into computers. I remember getting into computers right before I, I finished up uh, high school. At the time, you know, no one else was doing computers, right? And, and um, but I knew at that age that I was gonna do something with computers. And when I when I was done in high school, I had all these really awesome grades and everything. And and you know, at the time, there wasn't really a place to study computer science in Nigeria, yeah. so. Yeah, my thing was um, if I needed to do something with my life, I, I had to leave the country, you know, and, and it was very common. I mean, most of my high school buddies, you know, uh, all left. Um, they came over to the U.S. or to England. So those were my options. But the problem was, you know, I didn't have any money. So I, I knew I had to go figure out a way to, to find my way out here. <laughs> you know, so. let, me, let me stop you right there because this is, this is a testament uh, just to your, your, your work ethic. You placed fifth in your 95th percentile, um, right? In the 95th percentile, and a lot of people would have would have been, they would have been okay with that. They would have been oh, no. hey, fifth is, <laughs> is, is, is good, and they would have been that's that's fine. And although that that's that's still very good by a lot of people's standards, you did not uh, um, you did not accept that. That wasn't where you stopped. You wanted more than that. Uh, and right. that even leads up into uh, into when you actually um, were thinking about leaving or you knew that you were going to leave uh, Nigeria and make your way to either United States, Canada, or England, and how you went about – you said you were you didn't have the money. So to tell us about how you went about – because this is, this is amazing in itself. A lot of people um, wouldn't have taken it or went that extra mile uh, just to, you know, pursue um, their education further. I mean, because you were already, um, you know, tops in in your high school. Uh, You were valedictorian. Uh, You were one of the best. um, You competed nationally in computer programming contests. You placed second. So talk about, you know, talk about what you did in order to, to raise money and to get over to the United States. Um, well, first, I guess for me, right, I, I um, um, from, from all my experiences, right, I, I never take no for an answer, especially if it's something I know I've set my, my, my eyes at. Um, if I have a goal, basically, I, I never take no for an answer. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll stop at nothing, you know, until I achieve that goal. And, and usually, you know, I mean, my wife tells me this a lot. I mean, I, 
I sometimes beat myself up a lot just, you know, if I don't achieve, um, you know, a goal that I really set out for myself. Um, uh-huh. So, you know, when I finished high school, um, you know, I had all these really awesome great assets, you know, like an academic record in our GCE O-levels. Um, no one prior to me had ever made the grade I made, you know, so I had all this great stuff, and I knew that wasn't the end, right? I mean, I just felt it, you know? I, I felt yeah. it. I, I knew I just had to keep on going. So what I did was, you know, I traveled to the city of Lagos, um, which is, um, you know, one of the most popular cities in Nigeria. That's really where everything happened. It's like the economic capital of the country. Um, okay. Kind of like a New, New York, right? Um and I just walked the streets. I mean, literally, I, I, I was, you know, I was 16 years old, and, you know, I had my grades in my hand, one hand, and on the other hand, I was just knocking on every single door. I mean, I went to every single office, you know. I, I literally, I was not. My, my thing was, and I had a pitch. My pitch was pretty simple, right? Anybody I met, I told them, hey, you know, I want to go out. I don't care where I was going to go. You know, I could go to the U.S. or Canada or the U.K. I want to study computer science, and I knew... You know, I wanted to do something good with that for the world. And, you know, here is evidence that I'm not just bluffing, right? I, I've, I've spent the past six years of my life, you know, building this thing up. And and every everybody I talked to, really, at that, at that time, they, they listened to me. But, uh-huh. you know, the, the funds were, you know, were kind of difficult to come by. And so what really happened was, you know, over, you know, it was just, I call it, you know, Stroke of luck, right? Um, I I I came by the right person at the time who literally, you know, heard me out. And he was like, "You've never seen anyone who's got this much determination, and he was gonna do it for me, right?" And um, at the time, I had applied to, um, so I had written to seven colleges in the U.S. Um, basically, I had so we had we had a, we had no family here in the U.S., so I had. I have no guidance at all, right? And, and people you know, ask me how I ended up in Texas. Well, I have no idea, basically. So what I did was, you know, I wrote, I wrote to seven universities in the U.S., and they all sent me back all of the requirements. Um, I sat for the SAT. I pretty much made almost perfect scores. Um, so I, I had everything it took to enter any university anywhere, right? Um, uh-huh. But all those guys who were really interested in was, you know, I remember MIT, they had sent me this insane, you know, I needed to have uh, $50,000 a year or whatever. Um, and, you know, literally all the colleges were just like, you know, it's going to cost me like, you know, 30, 40, 50 grand to go to college. And, I mean, yeah. let me put things in perspective. Like, that money would feed the entire town a whole year where I grew up in Nigeria. That just kind of gives you the perspective of, you know, what that meant. Wow. <laughs> so it was impossible, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It was impossible to have that kind of money. Um, but only one university wrote me back, and they told me they had scholarships, right? And, and you know, when I saw the word scholarships, I'm like, that's it. You know, that's where I'm going. And it just happened to be the University of Texas in Arlington. <laughs> so um, guess what? That's the only university I applied to. Um, I got I got accepted, um, you know, but I had to go over. I had to find a way to, to fund my, my going over. So, I mean, you know, after walking the streets of Lagos and meeting the right people, I finally met a couple of guys who, who uh, you know, became sponsors for me. And, you know, with the backing of my family, I um, ended up in Texas. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of really started for me out there in, in Dallas. Um, this is uh, about 15 years ago. Wow. Very, very, very interesting, very inspiring, um, and definitely motiv- motivational. Um, that's that's an awesome story. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just, I mean, yeah, no, yeah. It was, it was, I guess it was a mixture of, you know, I was, I, I was just not with determination. I mean, there was just nothing that could stop me at that point, really. Uh, you know, I was, yeah. it was either, you know, it was, it was that bad that I couldn't even see the possibility of possibility of this thing not happening, of, you know, by not going to college and studying, you know, computer science. I, if I, uh-huh. I, I, I didn't even consider that that was a possibility, you know. I just knew it was going to happen somehow. And, 
you know, I had the faith, I had the conviction, I had the determination, and I was going to suffer nothing. I didn't care if it was going to cost me, it was going to take me two, three, four, five years. I mean, it took me a year. I spent, you know, a year after high school just, you know, doing this, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. So. Wow. So so you're, you're, you're at the University of Texas, um, mm-hmm. and you're in their engineering program. Um, right. How how was that? What was that experience like? Uh, being oh, I here? loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I mean, I'll just give a shout out right now to anybody anybody who is considering you know studying engineering. UT Arlington, highly highly recommended. Um, I love that place. You know, uh, I went over there and you know all of a sudden I met like a bunch of real cool people. Um, yeah. Right from the time I landed at the airport, Dallas Fort Worth. The you know the university had sent over somebody to pick me up in the airport. I mean, hey, guess what? I was a seventeen-year-old kid who just got here. I knew nobody, um, and I knew I was coming here for a purpose, you know. But I mean, it, it, I had a really great experience. Um, the school had arranged for somebody to come pick me up at the airport, um, you know. So it was really welcoming. They had a really great international community. Um, uh-huh. which, which I, I totally loved because I just felt at home like all of a sudden. Um, I, I just met a lot of people from um, all over from Nigeria, from all over Africa, from all over Europe, Asia, just all over. It was a really great, 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 awesome environment for me. So I felt, you know, very much at home. Um, and, you know, the programs were totally awesome and very challenging, um, you know, but I loved every bit of it. Excellent, excellent. So you started you started programming um, around the age of fourteen. Is that yes? That, what 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 language did you start off in? <laughs> Basic. <laughs> Basic. Wow. Yeah, this was back in the days where uh, so my high school at the time they had just uh, introduced computers. You know, it was pretty much one of the first uh, high schools in Nigeria at the time who you know that had a computer computer program. So, um, you know, I, I saw this thing and, and it was it was really awesome and I was like, you know what? I mean that's what I wanna do and, and you know, I, I got into it like right away and um learned basic programming, DOS and a bunch of other really cool stuff back then and um and you know, I saw a lot of feature in it at the time. Nice. Nice. Tell tell us tell me about maybe an early Something one one of your very first programs that you re, that you wrote that you were just like extremely proud of. What, what's what's one of those programs that you that may may still stand out in your mind that you were like, man, I, I can't believe I wrote that program back then. I, you know, this this was something <laughs> I was I was proud of. Ah, oh, let's see if I can remember. You mean back then or um, yeah, early? like in, in your earlier programming days. Um, hmm, let's see, let's see, let's see if I remember any of that. So, um, I think it was one of the, uh, the early programs I did that basically, what did it do? Um, so there were a bunch of files that, actually it was, it was the, uh, the contest we had done, computer science programming contest we had done. Um, what we had to do was basically search for, um, certain strings in a file, uh, and that was a big deal back then because, you know, if you're familiar with, like, the DOS system, right, and, and basic, I mean, <laughs> that's something yeah. like a big deal back then, you know. But, uh, you know, I was able to figure it out. I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was you know, a combination of, like, you know, hacking and just doing a bunch of trials and a bunch of things, you know, that uh, we came by a solution and, you know, finding a couple of strings in a file, Today it might gotcha. sound like, you know, something really dumb, right? I mean, but back then, you know, <laughs> a bunch of kids who, like, you know, had no clue <laughs> what they were doing, you know, had to figure everything out. And, you know, the first thing to figure it out, you know, basically won that contest. And uh, gotcha. I was one of the guys who actually got it out. So. Nice, nice. So, you, you, I mean, you obviously have a, a ton of self-motivation and a fire that, that keeps you going and keeps you – Striving for your for your goals. Besides your parents, which seems that they sounds like they were a big influence uh, in your life as far as 
you know, direction and things like that. Your father was an engineer. Uh, your mother was a school administrator. What, what else or who else inspires you? Well, um, at, an, at that early age, basically, I think it was, you know, um, yeah, you're right, my parents. Um, but also, I was like my parents' friends, right? We're really in the same circles, right? I mean, they're all engineers, and, and just being around smart people um, mm-hmm. is very inspirational for me. Because, um, you know, my thing is, I, I always never want to feel that I am the smartest person in the room. I always want to know that there's someone out there who I can, you know, learn from. Uh, and and just being around people, you know, like that is really inspirational to me. Um, yeah. And, and really that's what kind of kept me grounded growing up, right? Because I was always really around people who were like that, right? Um, even my friends, I mean, we were all nuts. I mean, we were, we were like, you know, like, like a nerd herd, you know? <laughs> it was really crazy. I mean, I, I remember they uh, they even had to um, they, they had to put us in special classes because you know when we were in the regular classes, you know, it was just really boring because um, all all the things that they would you know teach in the regular classes, those are things that we had covered like you know the semester earlier. Um, yeah. And it wasn't just me, right? I mean, it was a bunch of us, right? And, and uh, just being around those people, right, was 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 my thing. I always wanted to, to um, I mean, you know, I was 14, 15 years old, you know, back then. And, and basically every day, my dream was to go to class and and bring up a topic that had not even been considered by by any of my peers, so we could have a debate on on some you know physics or some math math or some you know science yeah. or chemistry issue, you know, that was my thing, and it was totally not that that's what we did. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's a very good point, because uh, I actually, um, I wrote a, um, it was almost like a how, how to, like if someone wanted to get into technology or wanted to get into, uh, you know, information technology, um, uh, it was kind of my how-to on how I I got into it. And one of the things that I listed was, you know, hang with the geeks. If you want to learn, <laughs> if you are, if you need to be in the know or if you want to learn and you want to, uh, want knowledge, hang with the people that are smarter than you, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, 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 you know, just listen, listen, get information, ask questions. And just hang with those people because those are the people that you, you're gonna, you know, learn from or pull information from. So mm-hmm. I definitely, mm-hmm. I definitely understand that that aspect. Um, mhm, mhm. And you know, something thing really so, carried, yeah. carried, you know, throughout my life. Um, you know, when I, uh, obviously, people ask me this stuff like, you know, if I ever, you know, did the regular things, you know, keep at that age deep, uh, and I'm like, well, to me, you know. Life was all about learning at that point, right? I wasn't really thinking of anything else than than just you know learning beyond my means, you know. Um, yeah. And and um, you know when I got to when I got to to uh, college and stuff, um, it was exactly the same thing. I I really looked out for people who I could hang out with people, you know, who who I could learn from. Um, yeah. You know. Um, and. You know, you know, you have to carry carry along with you know finding your life partner as well. I mean, I I, I wanted you know really the exact same you know um, uh, characteristics as well. You know, someone I could really learn from, um, and you know, someone who was smarter than me myself. You know, <laughs> so um, you know, my wife happened to be a chemical engineer, so it was something I I I, I that really got me really really attracted to you know things like that. I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's I mean, who that's, I am, and <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely understand. I mean, that's one of the reasons uh, why I uh, came, uh, grew, created, and founded uh, the Blacks in Technology uh, community uh, site uh, is because of the need amongst the Black culture to have that that type of unity, to have that that mm-hmm. community and that atmosphere. Uh, where we can go and we can exchange ideas and we can share knowledge and we can talk, you know, technology. 
uh, amongst ourselves uh, because sometimes when it comes down to it, a lot of it is, you know, who you're comfortable with talking to, you know. Um, <laughs> and uh, and I found, you know, with uh, you know throughout my years in, in, in IT that sometimes that's all it boils down to is people not being comfortable uh, talking to or bringing up a topic, you know, to where they might even – it, it, they might feel, you know, kind of like a, you know, kind of like a, I guess a, a outcast, I guess, uh, amongst mm-hmm. the crowd of people. Uh, so mm-hmm. I mean, the, the site is 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 there just for that. So you know, you want to want to learn some uh, some things. You want to learn about technology. You can come and you can be comfortable amongst people that uh, that look talk. Walk, dress, whatever, like you, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. and you can you can talk technology. So, mm-hmm. you know, I definitely yeah, understand that, that aspect of it. Um, very true. I mean, knowledge is not a monopoly. That's one thing I learned. It, it, you know, especially today with the internet, knowledge yeah. is not a monopoly. You know, um, back in the days, exactly. I guess you know, um, knowledge was kept from from certain people, um, but today, it's not. You know, basically. Yeah, it depends on really what you want in life. You know what I mean? Like, like even today, going to college, right? Sometimes I even question, you know, going to college and just sitting down to learn something because you know, if you're so motivated, you could learn like a whole bunch of things by just reading and just researching yourself and, and just you know talking to people who are, you know, who are in the know. And yeah. there's nothing that should stop you. You know, um, it, it's like. I remember, I still remember, you know, my entry into our yearbook um, back, you know, back in high school. And what I said was a quote that I had, you know, come up with, right? And it was, I think it was, you know, pursue knowledge like a sinking star far beyond the reaches of human imagination. You know, so it's kind of like if you, if, you, if you consider, you know, the sun setting, like, you know, you're just pursuing that sun, right? You know, it goes beyond yeah. the horizon, but you want to go other than that, you know, you just want to figure out that, you know, the the, um, the horizon is not the end. There's something beyond that horizon, you know, and if you have that yeah. piece of mind to go figure it out, then there's nothing, you know, stopping you. Yeah, that's, a, that's definitely a good quote. I definitely like that. So now, now you're, you're, you're um, you graduated from... Uh, University of Texas with honors, uh, and you are an engineer at Nokia. Tell us, tell us yes, about I, that. I, I worked, I, I, uh, I worked there for nine years. Actually, I'm not, I'm no longer there. Um, I was there for about yeah. um, nine years. Okay. It's totally, totally awesome experience I had because, um, you know, it really gave me the opportunity to see the world. Um, you know, Nokia is a, you know based uh, in Finland, Northern Europe. And, okay. you know, I did a lot of travel out there um, throughout my years. Just, you know, getting to work with really, really smart people. Um, and, and when I look back to those years, I think about the smartphone revolution. And, and you know, I, I think back to the fact that, you know, we literally started it, you know. I mean, when Apple came into the game in 07, um, a lot of people today remember Apple as that company who came up and, and to their credit, you know, made made the smartphone what it is today. But you yeah. know, we were working on smartphones way, way before that. Um and you know, we had a somewhat of a monopoly back in the days, you know. Um, yeah. and just being amongst, you know, a global Nokia's global army of engineers who built, you know, the insanely successful Indian smartphone. Um that was a really, really awesome experience I had. Uh, and, and it's unfortunate the way it's in the end sort of, you know, um, is literally disappeared. But, I mean, just being a part of that revolution was something that I would really cherish for the rest of my life. Wow. Wow. That's, um, they're actually, well, they're using, uh, they're using Windows or uh, mobile apps now, but, uh, right. Right. It sounds like they're trying to mount some type of comeback, at least on the hardware mm-hmm. side of it, uh, with the with the Lumia yeah. 900. Yeah, and I have it. I mean, you know, it's kind of hard for me to pick up any 
mobile device that's not a Nokia device, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, I mean, you know, it was just I, it was my sweat and blood. I put in for nine years building smartphones and Nokia. So um, I'm not there anymore, but I uh, most of the guys I work with are the same guys who are building the Lumia devices today. Um, yeah. You know, so I I uh, I I I'm really hoping you know the company could make a huge comeback. It's 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 a steep hill to climb, but you know hopefully yeah. there'll be a, a there's enough space for a third mega player uh, besides yeah. you know iOS and Android. So you know. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So now we get to Persona Five. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> That's what we came to hear. That's what we came to talk about, really. So let's let's let me um, have you tell us what Persona Five is, uh, and then we'll after after because it's beyond the, you know a, a great app um, that it is. There is a great social cause behind this, and the reason why I mention that is because. I love it when when people fuse technology around doing something for the benefit, you know, of humanity, so to speak, or doing it for right. a great cause and not, you know, and it's not just for, you know, making tons of goo gobs of money. Uh, of course, mm-hmm. that's, that's mm-hmm. always nice, but mm-hmm. <laughs> the social cause, the social aspect behind it is 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 incredible, and I, and I love hearing you know stories like these or hearing about applications like these uh, that mm-hmm. can do that. So, so tell us about Personify. Well, one liner, Personify really is an app that lets you discover what social good or volunteer opportunities are happening around you at any given time, anywhere you are in the world. Um, that's really what Personify is, right? Um, okay. But there's a, there's, a, there's a huge story behind it, and Personify really, and, and I'm not trying to mince words here, Personify really personifies my life and, and the experiences I have gone through in my journey. And every single person in this world, I can tell that same story. Everyone, everyone has got a story. And what we're trying to do basically is to let the world know that um, we all share a common humanity. No matter who you are, where you're from, how old you are, uh, and, and all of the various diversities we have on Earth, we all have a common humanity. And, you know, when I think about the work that we have done in technology, I think about the work I personally have been involved with at Nokia. I mean, Nokia literally owned, owned the world at some point. Right, with the devices we do. The thing that we have done has touched the lives of over a billion people on Earth. I mean, no other company, no other technology company has, maybe a few, but I can't think of any that right now, have really built a product that has similarly touched the lives of billions of people than the smartphone or the cell phone, right? So I'm thinking, you know, I mean, I, I traveled a lot, especially when I was at Nokia, and I'm seeing people, like, literally all over who are using products that we have designed. And I'm going, you know, I'm looking around me, and I'm seeing lots of problems in the world, right? These are things that, you know, simple things that, you know, that people can do to help. And nothing is being done. You know why? Because, you know, people don't know about these opportunities. But the thing is, you know, a lot of people want to do good, Right. That's one thing I have realized, you know. I believe everyone is inherently good, you know, but sometimes it's just, you know, circumstances, you know, around your surroundings or whatever it is that make people do whatever it is that they do. But you think about conflicts around the world. Think about all of the, you know, all of the the, the, um, the bad things that happen all over, right? All of these things uh-huh. are caused by people not understanding each other, people not wanting to talk. Not wanting to understand each other, right? If only, if only we can, we can show the world how similar we all are, right? I think half the problems in the world today will be solved. Just the conflict alone will be solved, right? And I'm like, you know, yeah. what kind of vehicle can we use to bring people together? 
right? So over here, right, it, it, in my view, right, technology is not the uh-huh. end. Technology is a means towards an end. And my end, really, is to try to create a better world. You know, what if you could just look around you and know, figure out, hey, you know, I could be helping a neighbor down the street to do X, Y, Z. Or, you know, there's, there's a kid down there who needs, you know, just a little bit of a help, right, in, in getting just a little bit, you know, work done. I mean, these are simple things that people really want to do, but I have no idea about these opportunities. So if you think about Craigslist, right, Craigslist is an insanely successful, you know, marketplace, right? Um, it's a very yeah. simple site, but it's, it's incredibly successful, you know? People go there, post stuff, buy stuff, do all that stuff. Like, I'm like, you know, how can we create that same um, uh, environment, right, more or less so for social good? And really, that's where the idea of personify comes around, comes about, um, where you really don't have to go um, – Think about figuring out what to do, right? Because, you know, you want to do stuff, right? Um, what if yeah. those, stuff, those things came to you, right? What if your phone could just tell you, you know, let you know things that are happening around you, right? You just say, hey, you know, I want to volunteer at, you know, um, at a soup kitchen, right? But what if your phone tells yeah. you, like, you know, you're traveling to New York, right, and your hotel, you're down there, you know, and, and your phone tells you, hey, down the street, you know, there's a soup kitchen that needs some help, Right? I mean, would that give you a little bit more boost to go do it? Um, another insight I gave a friend just yesterday I was talking, I was like, you know, what if you leave next to your neighbor, right, who you think is a jerk for whatever reason, and then the next day or the next weekend, you go volunteer at some, you know, um, kids thing, whatever it is, and you saw that same neighbor there doing exactly the same thing that you were interested in doing, I mean, would that make you think a little bit differently about this neighbor? Yeah. Would that bring you guys a little bit together? And then all of the differences you had earlier all of a sudden disappears, right? I mean, yeah. you know, there's simple things that we can do in the world, right, that could bring the world together, you know, that could make people to talk and intermingle and, and socialize and, and have fun, right? Um, when I came to the United States earlier, um, you know, I used to be disturbed by images I saw on TV about, you know, my country and, and other African countries, right? Um, uh-huh. and, and those images were always projected as, you know, really poor people who needed, you know, help. And all these charities would try to tell you how you can give a dollar to save a kid's life in Africa. But I'm going, you know, it's funny because when I was in Dallas, right, I volunteered at a local community church um, food bank. And, you know, I saw a lot more hungry people than I ever saw growing up in Nigeria, right? And I'm going, you know, but why do we have to let people think that all these things are happening in faraway, you know, Africa or in faraway South America, you know? Yeah. But these things are happening everywhere, all around you. I'm not saying it's not yeah. happening over there. I'm just saying, you know, what if you can know, you can feel, you can see that your help, right, is needed where you are, anywhere you are, Right. Um, yeah. In a sense, it makes people sort of start thinking locally. You think globally, but you, you act local, right? And, and and that's the whole idea, right? We're trying to start a movement um, and and trying to build an army of do gooders. You know, people who just want to do good, which I'm hoping, I assume, is really everybody. <laughs> you know, yeah. and and uh, you know, the more we the more we bring people together around these things, you know, I believe, I truly believe, you know. Um, it's a step in the direction of making the world together, bringing the world together, making the world a better place. And, and you know, technology in this sense, right, is just a vehicle. But the end goal really is about doing good and letting you know how you can do good, where you can do good, and, you know, having a social aspect to it, right, and having fun. Because, you know, you turn on the TV, you hear about charities trying to raise money for, you know, kids who are hungry in India and in South America, and you have all these really sad faces. And I'm going, you know, sad faces, yeah, but, you know, have you ever been to India or have you ever been to, you know, to, to countries in Africa? Dude, seriously, these people are some of the happiest people in the world. They have nothing. They really have nothing, but they're so yeah. happy, you know, because they don't, it's like, yeah. they're so happy, right? We see all these images of, like, you know, really sad, hungry faces, right? And I'm going, you know, no, that's the wrong image. You know, that's the wrong image. I think, you know, we could all have a great time and do good. 
right? And, you know, tying it into the social aspect, like what's going on with mobile applications and, you know, gamification and things like that, um, we're tying all those social trends right now and channeling all of those things, right, towards doing good. And, and I feel um, that's, you know, that's a step in the right direction and just trying to get people together and, and, and you know, have fun, do good, and make the world a better place. That's an excellent, excellent cause, excellent. Um, it's just that's that's a real, real worthy uh, a cause that you have there. Um, a lot of people, they, um, they're looking for something, you know, to, to put their time and effort into, and they're looking for for causes and uh, the, where they can actually, you know, lend some of their time and and, and their help, and and they can't they can't find it. They don't know where to even begin looking, and, and an app like yours is mm-hmm. is exactly what's needed. Um, mm-hmm. I'm on your site right now, and um, when, when did you go live? With, with so the um, I believe so. So the way this whole thing came about was when I, you know, started really so, – so, okay, so I had this idea, right, throughout last year. I was talking about there's a lot of people, and I just didn't go build it, right? And everyone yeah. I get talking to, they can tell them, hey, you know, this is a great idea, you know, great idea. But, you know, when I went to Start by Southwest this year, I actually did a demo because I, I actually started building this site um, uh, sometime in, in February. Um, okay. And – by the time March came around for South by, I, I had a working prototype, and I took that and I did a demo over there, um, and, and that's where it was carried by CNN and a couple other. Um, actually, give them give them a, a exclusive right to to do a preview of the app, which they did, and it was really awesome. Um, okay, nice. But then after I came back, after I came back from South by, I I, I launched it in a private beta. Because um, you know I wasn't really ready, I was, I was, you know, to, to get like the entire world in. So I had this private beta with a group of you know people who had signed up, um, you know, just to sort of work out the bugs and, and get some input. So that went through up until last week. So last week Monday, um, I I uh, launched the first version of the site. So right now it's live. Um, it's live and. You know, you can go over there and you can actually start posting things. So the cool thing about the site is, you know, you can actually create a cause, right? And, and okay. And um, it's very specific. So the cool thing about it also is, you know, it's not like, hey, there's something going on here. No, it's really about, you know, there's something going on here. And here is A, B, C, D things that we need. Here is A, B, C, D things that you can do, right? It's not just coming out and hanging out, right? You know, they're very specific. Gotcha. So you can... You can you can come out and know exactly what you want to do, right? Um, so you can go there, you can create something, um, and you know once you do that, it's right now tied into Facebook, um, where at some point I'm going to integrate it with literally all the social networks, so it's okay. kind of amplified. Um, and 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 also the interesting feature about it is you know all the all the events and causes are geotagged, so that means basically it knows its location and where, right? Um, the mobile okay. applications are not ready yet. That's what I'm currently working on. Uh, and, and when they are ready, you can literally walk around with your mobile phone, and it tells you exactly how far you are from the closest thing. So you can start to see the things that are happening around you. And, and you know, as the site gets popular, it will start getting populated with all these things. And um, you could be all over, wherever you go, and it's, it's always following you. So it just knows where you are. Right now, you can set it to default to, um, say, around 10 or 20 miles radius of where you are, and it can just okay. kind of show you all those things that are happening. Um, if there's anything happening, and there's no, if there's nothing happening, it tells you, hey, you know, there's really nothing happening. If you're really passionate mm-hmm. about doing something, you can actually create something, right? And, and um, you know, you give the location of, of where the, that thing will happen, that event will happen, and, you know, mm-hmm. it tells you are trying to, to, um, um, to do and what you need people to do, and then you know you could you could amplify it on on the other social networks like Facebook, Twitter, G Plus, Google Plus, and um, um, so that's the idea basically. The idea is really um, geotagged causes that knows you know, what people are. And Excellent. so so this is the, what we have right now on the site is you know the very initial um, version. There's a lot of really cool 
what I call optimal that we're planning and building into it. And it'll okay. be coming up you know, over the next uh, few weeks and months. Uh, one of the really interesting things I would just say would be um, you can set goals for yourself, right? So if you really want to do something, you can set a goal for yourself and say, hey, you know, this month I want to, I want to give up, you know, 20 hours of my time or 10 hours of my time or five hours or one hour of my time doing something. And, you know, you put that, you give that input, right? So the, 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 the app will suggest to you how you can meet that goal. And if you don't meet the goal, it kind of lets you know, hey, you know, you said you were going to do this stuff. You haven't done it. That is what you've done. Here's how you can complete yeah. the rest of it, you know? So it's just sort of a very motivational thing to keep you and to keep you sort of remind, reminded about the goals that you accept for yourself. And if you think about it also, at the end of the year, just like you get your W-2 that says, says how much, you know, how much money you've made, um, there's going to be mm-hmm. something like that. That tells you how much good you've done as well. <laughs> so, gotcha. so uh, you know, if you feel you're not doing enough, um, you know, it will just like give you motivation to 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 do more, and let you know, hey, you know, the next year uh, you can do a lot more and and uh, enjoy and and uh, have fun and make make good friends while doing this thing. I like it. It's 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 really an extension. Of um, and uh, like you described earlier, it's really an extension of 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 you, of your life, uh, because you're a very motivated person, a uh, very uh, self-determined person, and this app actually gives a person the ability to be motivated. You know, it actually helps them to become motivated about uh, a cause, and 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 uh, like you said, once you once you uh, implement. Uh, the feature to allow them to set goals. I mean, that's just further, you know, motivation uh, for them. And uh, mm-hmm. so it definitely, it, it's definitely an extension. And I, and I see a lot of people now. The 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 the, uh, the causes that have been created on here are these are these real causes that that I'm seeing scrolling up and down. Or yeah, whatever whatever you see, there are, are real things. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So there's already, you know, a lot of people on here creating causes and mm-hmm. and uh, excellent, excellent. Yeah. Now, let me, I, let me, the interesting thing as well is, you know, it's not just it, it, it's all over the world, right? You know, so I, I think last time I went in there, I had a couple guys from Finland, from you know, from yeah. London, who were like doing stuff already, and it was really cool just to see people from all over just you know posting stuff already. Excellent. Now they, I mean they. The expansion of this can be, you know, wh- wh- where do you see this expanding to? Um, because I, I mean, you can you can push this to, uh, you know, all types of, um, um, I guess, you know, places that you know need volunteers. Um, yeah, so, you know, yeah. So that's our next phase. So our next push basically is now to, you know, to get. Um, all all the organizations now because you know this has been the problem. Like the funny thing was you know the initial problem. So, so I take it back to to how this particular um, um, app started, right? Um, mm-hmm. Back in '06, 2006, you know when we got married, uh, you know on Christmas Day, you know we woke up and we tried to go volunteer at a hospital in Dallas um, at the time. You know we spent like a few hours just calling around and we couldn't really get a hospital to tell us you know, how we can volunteer. And I was like, that's insane. Like, we want to give up our business, yeah. right, to, to do something good. And they couldn't tell us. I'm like, there's got to be a better way for this, right? So if you think about organizations who are having the same problems, right, you know, if there are organizations who are trying to raise money for charity, by having all these events and things like that, but, you know, they have literally nobody show up um, just because either people don't know or talk to the right people. This is like a really simple way to to um, get people and get volunteers to. So the next big push we're doing right now is really, you know, getting all those charities and organizations um, to sign up. It's a free app. It costs them no money, um, you know. But the thing is, they start putting things out there, and it amplifies their story. You know, it amplifies their causes. And, and you know, they can reach out to a whole set of volunteers who, who are in close proximity to the events that they're trying to do. And as a matter of fact, I think I, I saw I saw a couple in there already, and, and I'm like, wow, you know, that, that's really awesome. Um, nice. You know, 
Um, yeah. I, I haven't reached out to them. You know, somehow they found it and they're already posting things out there. So it's really awesome. I mean, that's the whole point, right? Um, just yeah. to get people to more, more people to come come do stuff. And, you know, if you think about these organizations, you know, they're cash strapped. So a lot of them cannot afford to really go hire IT, you know, software engineers to go build, you know, um, go build stuff like this for them. So, you know, mm-hmm. there's a value add for them, right? There's a, there, there's a value proposition we're bringing to the city, right? You know, we've already built out a platform that they can use to further their goals. Without them spending the money, you know, trying to do the same thing, you know? And at that yeah. point, you know, Personify will be the marketplace where a lot of these things are happening. So I I want to describe it as the Craigslist for opportunities. So, you know, um, I'm here now inviting all organizations, all nonprofits, and all charitable organizations to come to Personify and post your causes. It's free, absolutely free. And um, we are actually going to be building something really special and awesome specific for organizations. Um, look out for that in the next uh, few weeks and months. Now, are you the only developer? Um, uh, uh, yeah, so right the- now, right now there's a couple of us, actually. Um, I'm, I'm okay. the lead in this. Um, and I, I work with... So, interestingly, you know, I actually have a global team, right? Um, I'm here in okay. Seattle. I uh, have a, um, a co-founder and a product um, management guy, a business okay. development guy in Helsinki, Finland. Yes. Okay. My US engineer is in Dublin, Ireland, and my animation engineer is in Brazil. So, you know, we're we're globally dispersed, uh, which is really awesome nice. because, like I said, you know, what we're building is a global marketplace. That's what we did. Um, so I really wanted to bring in elements of people I have met and worked with, you know, around the world. To, to bring in success of their lives into personified. Uh, nice. so you, can feel, you can literally feel connected to, you know, doesn't matter where you are, where you're from, um, you can feel connected and, 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 and have something meaningful for you in personified. Nice. So what what get, getting into some of the technical uh aspects of personify uh, what what platform did you did you um, build Personify on? Um, my technology stack basically is LAMP. So LAMP standing for Linux, and um, it, it runs on 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 the Amazon cloud basically. Um, okay. And, and that's the reason why, you know, I could literally be anywhere in the world and and um, you know work on it. Uh, so everything runs out there. And okay. Um, so you so you're yeah, coding well, in. Uh, and, and PHP. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's all nice. using PHP uh, and Zend framework. Um, it is a really okay. awesome framework to, to build, you know, web app. Um, there's going to be a couple more things we'll be working on when we start scaling the application. Um, but for now, you know, we are we, we are in a lamp stack. So, being that you guys are, are globally dispersed, what what type of uh, uh, are you, as far as being able to manage projects, what what are you guys using for that? Um, so there's, oh, a, yeah, there's a Scrum tool. That, yeah, there's a there's a there's a Scrum tool we use actually. Um, it's funny enough, it's actually built by another startup. Um, that was an ex Nokia guy. Um, okay. Based in Finland, so so it's really cool. A really cool project management. Uh, uh, yeah, um, uh, software. And obviously, you know, we do a lot of uh, a lot of Skype calls. And okay. So people have been asking me basically how I keep track with all these people around the world, and I'm going. You know, the interesting thing is I don't know of any other way to work because since I left college, I've been working in this global environment, right? Where half my team was in China, another half, yeah. was, you know, another group were in India, another group were in London, another group in Finland, and one in Dallas, one in you know in Silicon Valley and then getting Boston. So I've always been in that environment, right? So I don't know of any other way to work. <laughs> so, <laughs> so nice. yeah, I've, I've, I've learned from a very um, uh, early early time in my career how to really 
have cross-functional and, and globally dispersed um, di um, di uh, teams. Excellent, excellent. Well, it's definitely, um, Personify is definitely a, a, an excellent cause, and uh, we definitely look forward to seeing uh, more development uh, within the site itself. Um, sure. Okay. sure. Uh, what, 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 we are working on some really, really awesome features. So. <laughs> Excellent. And that's at uh, www.personify.it uh, for those out there who want to definitely who want to check out uh, uh, the website and uh, and join up and and put your causes out there if you have any. Um, so yeah, this this is definitely a great app. It's definitely a great cause. Um, definitely happy that you were able and thankful that you were able to you know jump on this podcast with me tonight and tell us about it. Um, what other things? Let me see. For for any for people who want to, I always like to ask people this: What what advice would you give? Anyone who wanted to get started in in, uh, in software development. Um, yeah, that's a very very good one actually. Um, you know, personally for me, a lot of the things I do right now, right, are you know things I really learned on the fly. Well, you could say perhaps because I already have the background. So yeah, that might be true. But in, in all honesty, I think if you really have a drive. Um, the internet is a very, very great source to find anything, right? I, I, I don't really read books. Um, that's because, you know, I, I, like, I, I kind of find that boring, <laughs> you know. Um, I'm always online doing research, finding out, you know, all the, all the things I need to find out. So, for some of you who, who want to, you know, get into software development, um, if you don't have the background, there's a really cool site now called Code Academy. Code Academy. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, Code, Code Academy. You can go there, and, and and I think they have some really beginner courses, right, for people who are who don't have any software background. Right? You can go there, and, and, and that's a great resource to get started. If you're really, really motivated, um, mm -hmm. yeah, there, there's, there's, there's uh, you know, tons and tons of places online where you can just go search. So basically what you need to do, right, it depends on what, there's a lot of, you know, facets of software development. So if you want to do web web development, um, you know, that's one area. If you want to do mobile development, that's another area. Um, these days people are getting more into mobile side because, you know, as you know, that's literally where the future is going. So yeah. um, you need to figure out what platforms you need first. Um, I do use a lot of PHP Zen right now just because, you know, it's really easy to get started on. Um, there are lots of people who are really into Ruby or lots of people yeah. who are on the Microsoft side, you're into the .NET side of things. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like different languages, right? Um, you just got to choose the one that you feel you can get started with. I, I highly recommend Ruby or PHP. Um, probably, probably PHP because, you know, I, I think... So beginner PHP is probably a very good way to get started. Um, I I'm not really much of a Microsoft tech um, technology. Uh, I've never really used .NET. So I can't really speak much about it. But those who have used it um, basically give it give it very good reviews. Um, but you know, all of these are open source technologies, so it really costs you no money to go um, to go buy the stuff for stack basically. Um, yeah. So. You know, lots of resources online. Um, you know, talk to people, talk to, you know, software folks, uh, engineers who are, you know, already doing these things. Um, I'm sure, you know, there are people out there who, who can, you know, help you and, and tutor you and, and, you know, guide you along with the, the right direction. Excellent, excellent. Well, again, I want to I wanna definitely thank you for, uh, for jumping on uh, the podcast with me tonight. Definitely. Um, very inspirational story, uh, a very worthy cause uh, with Personify uh, and your, your background, and you know, is is very motivational for uh, a lot of people um, who will be listening to this podcast. Uh, me especially. I mean, when when I when I again when I read your bio, I was just I was kind of just blown away. Like this, this is incredible. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, well, definitely. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Um, I definitely. I always like to uh, invite people who appear on uh, on the uh, on the podcast to uh, to join the boxing technology uh, community site. It's a free site. Uh, it's free to join. Uh, we have uh, close to 600 members uh, nationwide. Uh, and the cool thing about it and that I like to um, tell people is that we, we talk tech. So mm-hmm. when, you, when, you know, when you visit the site and you check out, you know, uh, the forums that we have and the questions and, and the things that we post, uh, it's definitely technology related. We're you know we're talking about software development. We're talking about networking. We're talking about cloud computing. We're talking about you know all aspects of of uh, technology. Uh, so it's uh, it's definitely a good place to uh, to go and and socialize with other uh, black technologists. Uh, a good mm-hmm. place to share your knowledge as well. Share your experiences. I mean, and and it, in the end, I mean that's that's what it's all about. It's about creating. Uh, this this very um, very good and you know growing community, uh, so that generations after you know people after us will can see someone or see you know something that they can you know that they can go to and they can be a part of with people that you know that basically look walk talk <laughs> like them and. Mm-hmm. And, right, and the, right, you know, right. they, they have that vision, they have that visibility, and they are able to see, you know, people who look like them. And so now they, you know, they can aspire to, uh, you know, to be the next, you know, Chucks, <laughs> you know. So, uh, I mean, that's what, it's, that's what it's all about. So um, I always like to invite, you know, our, the guests that I have on the show to, you know, come and be a part of the community and, and you know, partake in, in what we're what we're trying to build there. Like I said, just over... So it's close to 600, uh, 600 members, you know, now that we have on the on the on the site, and it, it's it's steadily growing. So, right, right, right. I think that's awesome. I, I really think it's, what you're doing is really is really amazing. Um, I, I guess you know, for me personally, one of the biggest things when, when I uh, got here first and realized in that you know I was literally the only one that looked like me in yeah. most of my engineering classes. Um, I, you know, being being an immigrant to the United States, I I didn't understand that initially until I really started, you know, understanding more of the dynamics of the U.S. Um, but you know, it, it goes more or less, you know, what you're trying to what you're trying to do. If you see more people who look like you, you know, it will give you more motivation to think that there's probably something for you there. So exactly, you know, um, yeah. Very well put. Very well put. So yeah. So definitely, you know, come to the site, join up, um, you know, and get in, you know, engage with people on the site. I mean, there's people talking about, um, you know, different different aspects of technology all the time. I mean, uh, you know, that's kind of what we do. And uh, there's actually uh, this is a good time to mention that uh, coming pretty soon. Also, uh, there I'm going to be releasing. A uh, another aspect or another extension of the site called the Bit uh, Bit Tech Digest. Uh, of okay. course, Bit stands for Blacks and Technology. And what that is is a um, it's going to be sort of like an online magazine of sorts, uh, tech magazine uh, with articles written by all Black technologists and uh, okay. you know subject matter subject matter ex- experts. Um, and, and you know, in their you know uh, their discipline. So you know, anything from Linux to you know software development to web development uh, to networking, you know, to mobile, anything you know within technology, you know, we're going to have a category, and we're going to have people that um, that uh, write articles uh, on that on that um, that specific topic. Uh, okay, sure. And, it it's you know as far as i know i don't i haven't seen anything um anything like it on the web so it's definitely something that's going to hopefully give you know the black technologists a huge boost uh as far as visibility uh and and you know that's that's mainly what it's what i'm all about is creating that visibility uh and creating that image 
Um, and so, you know, the Bit Tech Digest is definitely going to be coming soon. Awesome, awesome. I look out for it. Okay. Uh, thanks again uh, for joining me tonight, and um, good luck in the, you know, with all your endeavors. Thank you. Thanks, and uh, nice talking to you also. All right. Take care. All right. Thanks. Bye now. Bye. Blacks in technology. Black, 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 blacks in technology. Blacks in technology. Black, blacks in technology. Blacks in technology. Black, blacks in technology.